I'm Tom Sims, I'm a PhD student with, uh, working with Dr. Vishma Chakrabarty. I'm looking at the connections between the brain's reward and memory systems. In this particular study, what I'm doing is I'm having the participants play a card game against four different actors. The card game is rigged so that they win a lot of trials against two of the actors and they lose a lot of trials against the other two actors. I'm then um, having them look at the same actors' faces as they uh, make happy and angry facial expressions and I'm measuring the amount of spontaneous mimicry that occurs in response to these, uh, these different actors. Well, um, the two channels that I'm interested in are these two channels here, the fourth one and the fifth one here. Um, this channel here is taking um, an EMG measurement from the uh, corrugator supercilii, which is a muscle just above the eyebrow. Um, and that is a muscle that is uh, used when we frown, when we like furrow our eyebrows together. This sort of blue line here, this is, uh, this is um, an EMG recording taken from the zygomaticus major, which is a muscle in the cheek, which is this muscle that kind of draws the size of our lips up when we smile. Um, now, so you can kind of see this block here. There's a comment here which shows that the uh, participant's just been shown a, a, an angry face. And in response to that angry face, we've got a nice little like, block of uh, corrugator activity. And uh, on this line here, there's, a, there's a, um, a comment here which shows that the participant's just been shown a happy face. And in response to that happy face, the participant's just been, uh, has produced some zygomaticus major activity, they've just smiled. Now, this is all spontaneous because the participant hasn't been told to do this. This is just looking at these, uh, these faces. And he's spontaneously producing this uh, activity because we, we spontaneously mimic drawing social interaction, we do it all the time. We're hoping to find that participants imitate the happy faces of, of the um, actors that they've been conditioned to find more reward in, more than the faces of the uh, actors they've been uh, conditioned to find less reward in. So in other words, the actors, um, more, they, we expect them to imitate the faces of the actors that they won a lot of trials against, basically. Now, this, this, um, if we find this connection, it will be indicative of there being some sort of link between the brain's uh, mimicry and uh, reward systems. And seeing as mimicry is taken as an en index of empathy, we can speculate that there's some sort of connection between the brain's empathy and reward systems. Now, this has all sorts of connotations for conditions, sort of low empathy conditions such as ASC, which are associated with both a decreased spontaneous mimicry, lower trait empathy, and also uh, a decrease in the sensitivity to social reward stimuli. Hi there, I'm Jane Morris. I'm conducting a master's degree here at the university. I'm supervised by Dr. Kareem Van Rieken. Our current research investigates emotional recovery towards emotional stimuli such as positive or negative and how they may interact with task performance thereafter. The current research aims to and uh, reveal a difference in emotional recovery among individuals. Possibly the, uh, the paradigm that we're using could be replicated and used on clinical populations such as anxiety and depression. To assess an emotional recovery component, we have to use psychophysiological measures such as skin conductance, which attaches themselves to the, um, the distal phalanges of the two first fingers and then the pulse transducer to the third finger, which measures heart rate. Here we can see the participant engaging with the task. The participant is presented with positive, neutral and negative pictures, and then has to decide a gender of a face following either male or female. And what we can see here from the senses is in the first channel we're looking at skin conductance. We see here a positive event which is a positive symptom, so it could be a picture of a, a rabbit or an ice cream, something nice. And the participant has a strong response here, um, denoted by the two slopes, which show a, a change in uh, the amount of sweat produced at the tips of the finger. The second channel look, investigates um, the, the heart rate, and as you can see here, you have a clear peak. And essentially, when, when you are engaging with an emotional stimulus, the peaks may become larger, so your heart rate slows down as you become engaged with the picture. From these two channels, we will look at the, the data on the picture, but also after the picture, to see if there is a difference in um, of recovery depending on the context of the picture previous.